Hello, good morning everybody. Um, welcome to Holidays Horoscope and History with Lisa from Time for the Holidays. Um, today we're going to be talking about January 5th and we will start with the holidays. I hope you're all doing good. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday! So anyway, today um, the first holiday we'll talk about is National Bird Day. In 2002, Born for USA in coordination with Avian Welfare Coalition launched the first annual National Bird Day to promote um, avian awareness. National Bird Day is to is used to raise awareness for birds that are captured in the wild and then um, people take them into captivity and most of them die because it's like a shock to go from being free to being in a little cage. Um, really sad. So if you want to learn more about that, um, just go to um, www.avianwelfare.org slash National Bird Day. I'll put the link there so that um, you can check it out and see if there's anything you can do to help. It's also National Keto Day today. Um, ketogenic diets are a lifestyle change where people cut carbs out completely out of their diet um, to the extent where their body starts to con consume fat instead of carbohydrates um, for fuel and then they lose weight really fast. Um, somebody in my family did it and it worked out really good for them and they're all healthy now and you know so if, if you're interested in losing weight you can check out a keto diet. I know it's not for everybody but just check it out if you're interested in it. Okay it is also National Screenwriters Day. Screen, a screenwriter is someone who writes the original idea of a script movie or TV show. You know we all know who the actors are and the directors you hear about them all the time but Really, the screenwriter is the one who puts the idea into words, um, and thus it becomes a movie or TV show. So if there is a, an official website for that, if you want to go to it, it's nationalscreenwritersday.com. Again, the link. It's also National Whipped Cream Day. I think we all want to celebrate this one. I think that's my favorite one of today. Um, this day falls on the birthday of um, Ready Whip founder Aaron Bunny Lupin who invented Ready Whip in 1948. So add a dollop to something today. Tell me below in what you're making for desserts today. I want to hear about it. Um, so if you want to share any of this on social media, you can go to timefortheholidays.net um, and um, we have like memes and stuff like that for you to share on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and all that. So stop by. Okay, so if you're born on January 5th, then your horoscope sign is Capricorn. So for Capricorn, um, the time period is December 21st 1st through January 20th. Um, the element is Earth, quality cardinal, ruling planet Saturn, symbol seagoat, sign ruler Saturn and Uranus. Your birthstone is Garnet. Your lucky numbers are 4, 8, 13, and 22. And your personality traits are, you're a strong personality type. You like to be a leader. You like to be responsible for different um, things. You're very independent, but you can also be like really bossy and condescending. Um, so that takes care of Capricorn. So we'll talk about some history and trivia from um, January 5th, um, things that happened throughout the years. On 1887, first U.S. library school opens at um, Columbia University. In 1887, the first U.S. library school opens at Columbia University. In 1914, Henry Ford, um, automobile maker, announces an unprecedented, unprecedented um, $5 a day minimum wage for his employees. We're almost at the same thing now. <laughs> Let's hope some of those bills pass. <clears throat> okay, in 1914, George Reeves, American actor, TV, um, from the original Superman was born, Christopher Reeves' dad. In 1946, Diane Keaton, American um, Oscar-winning actress, was born. You know more from a lot of movies, such as like Annie Hall, and she's in so many things. We all love Diane Keaton. In 1968, um, Dr. Benjamin Spock, an American pediatrician, whose book *Baby and Child Care* is one of the was one of the best-selling volumes in history, was indicted for conspiracy to aid others in draft evasion because he was very outspoken about ending the Vietnam War. 
he was convicted and sentenced to two years for draft evasion, but luckily he didn't have to serve time because um, his case was appealed in 1969 and the federal court just set aside his conviction. Um, he's an interesting guy, not just for being a pediatrician, but if you um, look him up online, there's a lot of interesting information about him. Okay, in 1925, the first um, woman U.S. Governor, Miss Nellie um, Taylor Ross, we talked about her yesterday getting elected. Well, today she got to take office. In 1962, the number one song on the radio was The Lion Sleeps Tonight by The Tokens. Okay, sorry. In 1970, All My Children debuted on ABC. Um, fun fact, Eric Kane was there from the very beginning. Um, she's played by Susan Lucci. Um, she played um, Eric Kane for over 40 years. Um, she, We all know how she was overlooked for an Emmy 18 different times before she finally won one in 1999. So, how many of you guys watch All My Children? I watched it all the way until it ended. I, I love that soap opera. I miss those days of watching soap operas sometimes. Okay, in 1975, um, the number one movie was Godfather Part II, starring Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Do you guys like that movie? Honestly, I've never even seen either any of the Godfathers. But if you've seen them and you like them, um, tell me down below in the comments. So, in 1980... Gotta love 80s trivia. John Cougar Mellencamp made his debut on um, American Bandstand. Do you guys remember that? There'd be like a band or something playing and everybody in their 70s clothes and bell bottoms and orange and lime green tacky clothes um, would be out there just dancing away. <laughs> it was a funny show. I remember watching it when I was little. Okay, in 1980, the number one song on the hot... Um, 100 Billboard was Please Don't Go by Casey and the Sunshine Band. Beautiful song. Listen to it. Um, when I was making this, I ended up listening to that like a couple times. It just took me back many, many years to better times. Okay, in 1984, the number one movie was Terms of Endearment, starring Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger. It's a movie about a relationship between a mother and daughter, and the daughter goes off and gets married to a guy that the mom hates, and he ends up cheating on her and she ends up back with the mom. Um, just check it out. In 1984, the um, police played their farewell concert in Australia um, until 2007 when they decided to do a reunion tour. Did you get to see them at all? Um, did, did you ever see the police on tour? If so, tell me below. I want to hear about it. In 1985, the number one song on the Hot 100 billboards was Like a Virgin by Madonna. In 1987, U.S. President Ronald Reagan produces the nation's first trillion dollar budget. Yikes. And it's probably been there ever since. 1988, the number one song was Faith by George Michael. Sadly, in 1998, Sonny Bono, American singer, we all know him, you know, Sonny and Cher, um, died when he hit a tree in an accident when he was skiing in Nevada. That's so very sad. So many good people are like taken before their time. wonder why that is. So in 2007, and I'm going to botch this name for sure, Mamu Fuku Ando, the inventor of ramen noodles, also known as Mr. Noodle, died at the age of 96 in Osaka, Japan. Wow, he lived a long life. And many college students are thanking him today. Honestly, most of us are thanking him today. Who am I kidding? 2017, Erica Gardner, activist, um, daughter of Eric Gardner, who died in the New York City borough of Staten Island after Daniel uh, Pantaleo, New York Police um, Department officer, put him in a uh, prohibited chokehold while arresting him. Um, well, his daughter, Erica, you know, who really went to bat for her father, um, ends up dying at only 27 years old um, after being in a coma. But just a little side note, um, on June 8, 2020, um, the New York State Assembly passed the Eric Gardner Anti-Chokehold Act, which stipulates that any police officer in the state of New York who injures or kills somebody through the use of a chokehold or similar restraint can be charged with a Class C felony, punishable up to 15 years in prison. Let's hope that saves some lives. 
2021 as of today um the worldwide coronavirus cases are more than 100 million people infected everybody wear your mask use sanitizer wash your hands stay home when you can get grocery deliveries do whatever you can to protect yourself and to protect your family and you know those that you love and let's put an end to this pandemic it's awful a scratcher there's Susie as soon as I start taping all my animals have to act up and let their presence be known so anyway thanks for stopping by time for the holidays and listening to holidays um, horoscope and history um, I hope you guys all have a great day and don't forget to check out our um, gift shop we have a gift shop where we like have a lot of um, merchandise for silly holidays and health awareness days and things like that so, and if you know anything else that happened today that you think should be put on the blog, um, just put it down there in the comments again, and um, if it can be validated, I'll add it in. All right, well, thank you. You guys all have a great day. Bye.